At the end of the Cold War, the United States of America was left as the world's sole superpower. But three decades later, the US finds itself in global retreat. America still has military bases spread across the world, but it has arguably lost the appetite to leave. I'm Ali Mustafa, decoding the roots of American decline. At 8 a.m. on December 7, 1941, Japanese forces launched a surprise attack on Pearl Harbor. It was a desperate attempt by the Japanese, who had almost run out of fuel, to draw the Americans into the Second World War. Four years later, the U.S. nuked Hiroshima and Nagasaki while the Japanese were still negotiating their surrender. The nuclear attacks were a message to the world announcing the arrival of Pax Americana. The Soviet Union wasn't far behind, testing atomic weapons of its own and competing with the US for global domination. The competition would lead to the Cuban Missile Crisis, bringing the world to the brink of an all-out nuclear war. Soon after, the Americans found themselves in Indochina, which remains alongside the Iraq War, one of America's biggest military failures. Between 1965 and 1975, the United States and its allies dropped more than 7.5 million tons of bombs on Vietnam, Laos and Cambodia. Double the amount dropped on Europe and Asia during World War II. The Vietnam War cost more American lives than all of America's 21st century conflicts combined. It ended with a humiliating loss. Yet, American diplomacy quickly recovered its momentum in the wake of the lost war. Jimmy Carter brokered a peace deal between Israel and the Egyptians. He also armed the anti-Soviet insurgency in Afghanistan, but the US would lose its strongman in Iran to an Islamic revolution. The ensuing hostage crisis at the US embassy effectively ended Carter's presidency. Ronald Reagan consolidated American power by exporting US-style democracy, especially to Latin America and Eastern Europe. He helped tear down the wall that divided East and West Germany and saw to the economic collapse of the Soviet Union. A false sense of American exceptionalism set in after the Soviet collapse. This bubble continued to grow throughout the following decade with success in the First Gulf War, pacification of the Balkans, and strong economic growth at home, mostly on credit. It grew further still, mainly due to economic activity associated with war following the 9-11 attacks. Encouraged by the rapid fall of the Taliban, American leaders announced a global war on terror, embraced a policy of military preemption invaded Iraq and declared their intention to turn that country into a democratic model for the rest of the Middle East. And we all know how that turned out. The United States found itself bogged down in quagmires in Iraq and Afghanistan and entangled in a number of smaller conflicts throughout the Middle East and North Africa. Then, in 2008, the bubble burst and in came the Great Recession, which gave rise to a populist reaction on both the right and the left. The Tea Party and the Occupy Wall Street movements were eventually reabsorbed within the two major political parties, further polarizing both the Democrats and the Republicans. And in 2016, a divided electorate gave a non-traditional candidate running on a populist, anti-establishment and anti-globalist platform a perfect opportunity to win the American presidency. Over the past 40 years, the personal income of 90% of Americans has grown more slowly than that of the whole country. Those in the top 1% have seen their incomes grow several times faster than the national rate. And now, with the abysmal response to the coronavirus pandemic, which has taken more American lives than all of its wars in the past 50 years combined, the story of America's decline continues. Tell me what you think and leave your comments on Twitter at Ali underscore Mustafa.